<laughs> yes, this one is this one is it. This one is lit, as they say. Welcome to chess, ladies and gentlemen. Maliga Young Puck Dining saw my chess, ladies and gentlemen. I'm actually a little bit sad because I literally just got done recording uh, this video. <laughs> And I accidentally, I have like certain buttons that I can press to start and stop a video. And I accidentally hit the cut off button. So I only literally have an intro and I liked it. It was cool. So yes, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing, but here I am back again. So I appreciate everybody for stopping by. I do have the round two game two between Wesley So and Jordan Van for East. Uh, we are in the middle of a playoff to try to see who will advance uh, for the Chessable Masters, of course. So for all of my people that are in the Philippines, I would say Mabuhay, Maganango Maga, Maganango Pon, Maganango Oro. I don't know if anybody's going to watch this at night, but Maganango B, if you do, Kamusta na Aking Makai Bigan. Appreciate you guys very much uh, for coming by and taking a look at my stuff. Anybody who is coming from the Netherlands or who does speak Dutch, let me just add a tweak onto this real quick. I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> I like for it to look a certain way. Bam. You guys just saw some editing. Some high, some some high level editing going on. Uh, for all of my people that are coming from the Netherlands or who do speak Dutch, um, I will say hello uh, and thank you. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by and taking a look at my stuff. You guys are ready to go? Yes, ready. All right, let's go. Let's take a look and see what we have for this game. Let me not hit the wrong button again. Bam, <laughs> D4. It's literally crazy. 400 videos and I still can manage to to, to press a wrong button sometimes. Uh, D4, Knight to F6. And this, this opening is going to have like a little special place in my heart because it is something I personally play currently. Uh, and uh, I, I like to think I'm pretty good with it against all comers. Uh, we do have uh, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop to g7, e4, d6, knight to f3. So we do, hit, we do have the king's Indian. Uh, and personally, uh, I am a king's Indian Larson player. There's not a secret to the things that I play. Uh, I'm a specialist when it comes to openings, so I don't play like a whole bunch of different openings. I like to focus on like certain openings. Uh, so after castles, personally, I do go bishop to e3, and I just see what black wants to throw throw my way. You know, they got bishop g4s and knight to c6s and, and e5s and stuff like all kinds of stuff try to come try to come your way. Uh, but um, after castles, we do have uh, bishop to e2. This is what Wesley so plays. Uh, we have e5. Castles by white. Pawn takes d4. Knight takes d4. And so you have rook to e8. And now you know white is trying to chip away at this nice center that you have established. Uh, so we go ahead and play f3. Nice solid way to just make sure that your structure is, is good. Uh, we have c6. Also, you know, you don't really, you're not too much worried about opening the f-file because there is not a dark squared bishop, uh, you know, really kind of influencing the situation because it's fiend kettled over here. Uh, so after c6, we do have king to h1, just being extra safe. Uh, we have d5, pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5, and not pawn takes d5, but we do see bishop to g5. Uh, you know, just trying to pin this knight down. Of course, you know, we're looking at some possible knight takes d5 situations. Uh, so the knight does come to c6, trying to, you know, counterattack the knight we have in the center of the board. Bishop comes to b5, uh, and you see we pretty much have these knights pinned down to everything that's important in black's position. And then here comes a novelty of the game, which is h6. Uh, and uh, in the past, um, queen to b6 has been played. And it's crazy because it was in 1987. Uh, so, you know, just a couple of years ago. Uh, but we do have h6. Uh, the pins are just really annoying for black. Uh, so he's trying to get rid of them. Uh, so we have bishop back to h4. We have queen now to b6. So, you know, this is adding some nice pressure onto this, uh, this knight here. So bishop to f2 is an option. Uh, just, uh, you know, making sure that if, uh, you know, the knight takes, we take like with the bishop and we kind of displace the queen. Uh, but we do have knight takes c6, you know, just getting rid of the pressure. Pawn takes c6 and then we throw an inner mizzo move in, a little Zweishenzug move with bishop takes f6. And then we have bishop takes f6. And, you know, assessing the position, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have this, this, this bishop that's under fire from the pawn. You know, we do kind of have this pawn a little bit loose, this bishop can take, stuff like that. So we have reached a point in the game that if you do want to pause the video and see what white plays in this position, go ahead and do so. Okay, so um, it might kind of seem like, man, I need to move my bishop. 
but it's like it's it's a problem because you know I got I got this uh I got this pawn that's about to drop. Uh and I mean it's just really that's kind of like the focal point I think. I mean that's definitely something that kind of stood out to me. But there is a really really nice and it's like one of the only moves you can actually play in a position. But it's a really really nice uh sacrifice. And so if you guess knight takes d5, uh you're you're gangster. Um and you are noticing uh, the other things that you notice in the position uh, other than just this bishop is the fact that this bishop is completely undefended. This rook is undefended. And also this pawn is kind of pinned against this rook. Uh, so black, you know, they kind of have a little bit of a developmental issues. So knight takes d5 perfectly exploits all of that. Because if you do capture here, you're going to be looking at the bishop taking this undefended rook. So it's a really nice tactic in the position. Also, this bitch, this this queen is attacking, or this knight is attacking the queen. So I mean, if you did something like that, I mean, you would be taking here with check, and this uh, would be winning uh, a nice little exchange, and then you'd have time to you know to protect your b pawn. Uh, so we don't want to go into that. So after knight takes d5, we do see pawn takes d5, just having to give away the exchange. Bishop takes on e8. We see bishop down to b7, and then we have queen to a4. Uh, and it is kind of offering this pawn, but it is preserving, uh, you know, this bishop uh, and allowing some nice little attacks to come from white. So pawn takes e4. We actually have queen to d7, you know, putting a real threat on this pawn here. Pawn takes f3 because we just say, hey, man, we're just trying to take a million pawns. So we have queen taking f7, king going to, uh, to h8. We see pawn taking G, uh, f3. And I mean, this position is just like extra, extra beautiful for white. Uh, you know, you have a situation where this pawn isn't really in danger. Uh, you know, you're going to be swinging this rook in. And I mean, just the fact that you have that extra rook just really comes like seriously into play in the position. But we do have bishop to g7 trying to back up and just protect the king. Uh, and now we do see another pawn dropping with queen takes g6. Uh, and we are offering a trade of the queens. Now, as I always talk to you guys about, you do want to trade queens. <laughs> I mean, you definitely, if you are up material like this and in exchange and all that, like it is just going to completely 100% benefit you to trade queens now. Um, it's going to be beautiful. Uh, so queen takes on b2 uh, and we see uh, bishop to c6. In the situation where you are up in exchange, but the opponent does have double bishops, you do want to try to get rid of one of those bishops because a lot of the times, you know, they can a bishop can be annoying to a rook because they can tether themselves onto a pawn. And then the problem is now you have to consider giving up in exchange to get one of the bishops off the board. So if you can trade bishop for bishop, this is going to be just completely ideal. So as uh, of course, uh, black does not want to go into that trade. So they come back and try to pin the bishop. We see rook uh, A to C1, uh, you know, just making sure that we protect the bishop because it is double attacked. Rook comes to G8 uh, and then we have queen down to E4 and we're preparing to either take the bishop or break the pin. Uh, like we've already broken the pin, so we're preparing just to, you know, snap the bishop off the board. So we do see bishop back to c8. Like I said, it is not going to benefit black to trade this bishop off the board. Uh, so we do not want to see, we do not want to do that. But also, as you can see, white has, you know, pretty much taken care of any of the weaknesses and stuff that they have in their own position. Uh, you know, because this pawn was a little bit iffy, uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, and this diagonal was a little bit, a uh, little bit hot. So we went ahead and cooled it down some. So the rook comes to g1. Uh, we see queen down to f2, and we see bishop to d5. And, you know, it's it's been bad for a while, but, I mean, this is, like, super duper extra bad. Uh, so we actually see rook coming to f8, sidestepping that bishop. Uh, but then we see uh, the move that ends the game, and that is rook takes g7. Uh, and uh, it is giving up the exchange, but this is actually completely mating for white. Uh, and we can just take a look at just one of the variations, uh, probably something that is probably already in people's minds, like what happens if the king takes, right? So like I said, it is in this position uh, that Van Foris does resign the game. Uh, and uh, so, you know, Wesley gets go, goes ahead and gets him a win. Um, but if we go ahead and just, like I said, take a look at if king does take, um, it is actually a maiden seven. This is actually the second uh, suggested move by the computer. Uh, the best possible move is actually queen takes f3 with check. But as you guys can see, I mean, queen takes f3 is just going to result in something like this. And I mean, you're just going to be down like a billion pieces. So we don't want to do that. Uh, you don't really want to do any of it, but I mean, this is going to be the best possible scenario. Uh, like I said, king takes g7. 
uh, is the second best move, but it is a, a mate in seven. The best move was a mate in eight. So going down the line of mate, uh, we have queen uh, to e7 with check. King comes down to g6. We see rook to c6 with check. King comes down to h5. Bishop comes to f7 with check. Rook has to take only move. Uh, queen takes f7 with check. King comes over to g5. Queen goes down to f6 with check. King goes over to h5. And then we see queen takes h6 and that's checkmate. So this is just one of the possible mates. But like I said, literally when you look at all of the moves given, they're all mates. It's just mates in different numbers. Uh, so um, that is a really nice and straightforward game. And I mean, the King's Indian is not dubious for black, but it is very strong for white. If white can know the theory and like understand the positions as far as the King's Indian is concerned, then, I mean, white should have a really, really nice game. And it's going to be black that's going to be on the back foot. So that's how that ended up being. So uh, I appreciate all of uh, everybody for coming by. And I will get these good mornings real quick for my people in the Philippines. Uh, so my name is my Agahan. My name is my name. 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 My name is Yes, my apa abak, my yad na aga, mapia agai, mapia kapa pizza, my big abukla, marja na buntag, maria my nat, malpe na aga, kasanyangan si elubi, salam, assalamu alaikum, merci, appreciate you guys very much. Thank uh, you to my people that are coming from Netherlands or who do speak Dutch. Uh, I will say pa uh, alam and makita tayo mamaya to my people in the Philippines, and I will see you guys next time.